Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Now yesterday, Mr. V had let me know that my sound was, was off a little bit and there was a, and then um, I can't remember the other guy had told me that it sounded more tin cannish. Um, I think, and many of you out there might be able to correct me, but I've been working with this for a little while this morning and there's a setting on my microphone, it's called gain. And in my testing, that seems to have solved the problem. But if it didn't solve the problem, let me know and I can turn some other knobs. <laughs> you just have to tell me which knob to turn because I know nothing about this audio stuff. Um, <clears throat> now, what I'm about to show you to me was fascinating. And <clears throat> first, um, I wanted to, there's, there's a lot of talk going around about this Federal Reserve, the real-time payment system, and whether they'll use Ripple and all of this stuff. Now, <clears throat> I've looked around enough and I've seen uh, what I'm about to show you. Um, I've seen commentary from some people that work at Ripple and I've pieced it all together. And the gist of what I see is that there, this particular system is not going to be using Ripple or XRP, but it's going to be good for Ripple and XRP. Almost the way that we've talked about walled gardens it's it's kind of like the the federal reserve will have its own walled garden but it will be make it easy for uh things to be plugged in with with ripples cross-border payments and that's what i'm kind of getting out of all this now um the federal reserve announces plans for a real time but first i wanted to show you this now this is interesting to me this this is fascinating to me <clears throat> do you ever get the feeling Many of you who are veterans in the XRP community and many of you who have started to study all of this and started to do your own research about digital assets, one thing that comes up quite often is whether this was all started by governments. You know, governments, you know, we talk a lot about how governments, uh, this was a creation uh, and, and it, was a cre it came out of the financial crisis and it was an answer to governments. Well... There's one theory that's going around for a long time that the governments, they know that their central bank model will not work much longer and that they created all of this. Well, look at this. This is from the announcement. This is an article from the, about the announcement yesterday. And remember, they called this, um, the system they've come out with is called Fed Now. Fed now is expected to be available by 2023-2024. Well, <laughs> Mr. B tweeted this out. Um, or, no, so they announced Fed now this system yesterday. Well, Mr. B at XRP Mister sent this out. Fed now was filled uh, was filed for trademark October 15th, 2008, during the financial crisis and abandoned 2-18-13. But here's what is interesting to me. This is the actual U.S. Um, this is the U.S. Trademark Office, folks. This is from the U.S. Trademark Office, and it, the applicant is the Federal Reserve. Okay. This is what I find interesting. Fed now, and this remember, this is on October fifteenth of two thousand eight. Two thousand eight says providing same day electronic processing of ACH transactions via a global computer network. What this means folks is that the government, they were fully aware of digital assets and blockchain in 2008. They knew all about it before it came out. That has to make you <laughs> ask a lot of questions. And the, some of the people on Twitter will come out of the woodwork um, off of this right here and and come you, you'll probably see a lot of things and I'll show some of them to you as people bring things out but this right here to me is a big deal and the reason it's a big deal look remember the Bitcoin ledger started on the 3rd of January 2009 so this thing is trademarked before Bitcoin comes out these guys had to know someone in the government had to know about Bitcoin that's what it says to me 
And then, as we know, XRP was created by a group of guys, was created by a group of guys to improve upon Bitcoin. It, and I'm not saying this is what happened, but I am saying that a lot of good arguments could be made that Bitcoin was, was an experiment and that some of these other digital assets that are better are, are the evolution of that. And who knows who started the evolution of that. Um, but anyway, that's all I'm going to say there. Now I want to get into, there's, there's been debate on online, and I'm going to kind of show you what I think this all means. Um, there's been debates online about what the, the faster payments thing and whether Ripple's going to be involved or XRP. My conclusion is kind of like um, they've, they were probably considered and, and all of that, but it's, who knows, down the road, Ripple could play a part. But in the short run, I believe that Ripple and XRP are not the, like the chosen system or whatever. Um, it says, this is from Cryptopolis. He says, if you watch this video from 2017, Esther George states that they are working with a private company by giving them time to build out their ecosystem. What other company was working on payments and settlements in mid-2017 besides Ripple? So you can go and watch that. But if you go along here, follow me here. Um, this is from Savvy XRP, and he, he shows this. The Fed Pay Improve, this is their uh, Twitter feed, uploaded a Ripple Tech video to YouTube back in 2016. I think it's fair to say they are familiar with what Ripple brings to the table. Open your eyes. Now, I don't this. I don't disagree with that. It, it uh, it's obvious because Ripple was on the Faster Payments Task Force. They do know about Ripple. I think they do like what Ripple's doing. I think in some form or fashion, at some point, they will Ripple will be in the mix. But I don't really, based on the next couple things I'm going to show you, I don't really think that they are chosen for this particular thing at this particular time. Um, next, um, this and this is from Galgatron. Galgatron had retweeted this and says, a lot of the pieces we, this is from Ashish Birla. He tweeted in response to a lot of this. This was actually, I think, in response to the tweet from Dilip Rao uh, or, or that dialogue where Dilip Rao was, was tweeting out about the Fed payments thing. A lot of the pieces we write about are thought leadership pieces about the industry in general and not specifically about Ripple. If there is, an, is, a, is a Ripple angle, I'll, explicit, I'll be explicit about it. And so Galgatron is retweeting this, basically saying that this is the acknowledgement that it, this is not Ripple. This particular thing is not Ripple. Um, and then there was this <clears throat> from Jonathan D at XRP underscore YD7 um, from Warren Paul a Anderson, who I think he works at Ripple. It says product Ripple. So I'm assuming he's in product at Ripple. U.S. has one of the least efficient domestic payment and settlement systems in the world. So this is huge, a huge win for the U.S. economy. And he's tweeting out the thing by the Federal Reserve about Fed now. Now, the, there's a dialogue that goes on here. Um, this is for domestic payments. And then Warren Aaron Anderson comes in and he says, this could greatly help U.S. cross-border payments and thus the work Ripple is doing because it could hopefully speed up last mile transactions in out of the U.S. So what I think, the way I am envisioning this is that, yes, this faster, just like I've said about how Libra <coughs> from, from Facebook would get all of their people online with digital assets so that it would be very easy to bridge to an XRP. That's the way I'm seeing this as well. Now, there's a uh, thread on this, and remember this, what Warren Paul, Paul Anderson says, hopefully speed up last mile transactions. Now, we go to this thread is from XRP Research Center, and he did a long thread at XRP Center. Let's fast forward to the 10th thing in the thread. He says, how is Fed now, help, how, do, how this Fed now help Ripple improve its cross-border payment services, both XCurrent and XRapid? The answer is quite short. With the integration of faster last mile payments, same thing Warren Anderson said. Um, I did say that right, didn't I? Warren Paul Anderson. <clears throat> I'll explain why in the following tweets. I'll focus on X Rapid. Same applies to X Current. Think about the following scenario. Bob has a bank account with Wells Fargo. Sinfriend has a bank account with HSBC. 
and Bitstamp US has a bank account with JP Morgan. In a typical X Rapid transaction, transaction SendFriend will require Bob to fund its SendFriend account in anticipation of the actual execution <clears throat> of cross border settlement through X Rapid. Such funding will require Bob to start a last mile payment through domestic rails for the benefit of SendFriend's HSBC account. Once SendFriend has domestically been credited with Bob's funds, it can now start the X Rapid process, meaning that it has to start another last mile payment to fund its Bitstamp account in anticipation of the correspondent purchasing of XRP. Um, so far, two domestic last mile payments have been made to initiate an X Rapid um, TXN. Bob's Wells Fargo, SendFriend's HSBC, Bitstamp's JP Morgan, all of this happens inside the U.S. Once at Bitstamp, funds can be used to purchase XRP and send them into other countries. Last mile payments happen in, in both ways, payment initiation into other countries and payment reception from other countries. Here comes the fun part. XRapid shall be understood as payment software designed to automate the process of merging domestic last mile payments, either initiation or reception of payments with XRP conversion against two different fiat currencies at both sides of a transaction. All of the above said, if you have the Fed improving last mile payments velocity with the implementation with an efficient RTGS system with connectivity to 10,000 banks, you also have the Fed indirectly improving X rapid payments velocity at least at US leg on uh, of the TXN. <clears throat> so this goes on well, let me finish. Essentially, what FedNow would do for the benefit of Ripple is improve the speed of both Bob's transaction into SendFriend's HSBC account and SendFriend's transaction into Bitstamp's JP Morgan account. This would improve the overall cost and speed of an X Rapid TX transaction. If you understand this thread, you will understand why Ripple is interested in pushing the Fed for creation of domestic RTGS system. Following other countries like Mexico, Ripple does not need to operate, provide a, a RTGS system to be a be, be benefited by it. And I think that is about as good as you're going to get, folks. Really good job but done by XRP Research Center. Give them a follow at XRP Center. Um, next, from XRP Dave, the Davey92. Just wanted to read briefly a couple of these quotes. Experts say now is the time to invest in crypto and eToro makes it, e eToro makes it easy. Um, Mike Alfred, CEO of Digital Assets Data, believes Bitcoin is the most important asset class of our lifetime and that every customer should allocate up to 5% of their portfolios for crypto assets. David Tewil, president of Maglin Capital, recommends investors own between 2 and 3% in crypto assets. Even Mark Mobius has changed his tune. The co-founder of Mobius Capital Partners, who, who once famously branded Bitcoin a fraud, now believes cryptocurrencies will be alive and well in the future. And then there's this from Adex Big Time. And I'll close with this. Peter Schiff is really mad about how CNBC is covering Bitcoin. Why does CNBC, and by the way, there's a blower going in the background, but you're used to that if you're a listener of this channel. Why does CNBC allow Brian Kelly to lie about Bitcoin? He just assured viewers that a new high in Bitcoin is a certainty because for the first time ever, an institutional herd is now buying. Brian, I challenge you to identify those institutional investors that have piled in. Wow, that, that is, I'm amazed that he is going down that road because I could give him the names of well, Harvard and Yale, for instance. But also, you could look at what Ripple has sold. Ripple sold, what was it, $250 million of XRP? I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family to explain to Peter Schiff that institutional investors, there is a herd coming in. Thank you for listening.